The Ukraine war has evolved into a conflict in which any movement is determined by the massive presence of frontline explosive and surveillance drones. More and more small vehicles are coming into action to the detriment of the slower, more identifiable armored infantry carriers. Russian soldiers have recommended in recent months via their Telegram accounts that electric motorcycles be used, because they are silent and are harder for drones with thermal night vision to detect. According to them motorcycles are a good tactic because they are harder for drones to intercept, they are less noisy and faster than armored vehicles or SUVs. But recently, in Kurakovsky direction the active movement of Russians with the aim of taking Selodovo is slowed down by heroic guys from the tactical group Krasnogorovka of Ukraine. Five Russian motorcyclists were going to storm the 21st Special Forces Battalion in Krasnogorovka. Four were destroyed by drones. The assault was repelled. Not everyone thinks the use of motorcycles is such a good idea, because they are also more vulnerable and unstable. A conscientious person knows that 90% of them will end up being killed in action. Militarnii, a Ukrainian media outlet specializing in military information, concluded that it is unclear whether the vulnerability of the motorcycles compensates for their use, their speed makes it possible to reduce the time they are in the open, minimizing the possibility of being detected and destroyed. But, despite their speed and maneuverability, they are often easy targets for drones and artillery, and due to their lack of protection, their crew members' chances of survival are minimal. Soldiers of the invading Russian army have used armored combat vehicles to close the passage under the railway bridge near Selavoda village of Pokrovsk district in eastern Donetsk region. The invaders, who blocked the road with at least four vehicles, fled, abandoning the T-72 tank, which was fully operational. As a result, the crossing was opened, and the tank worth $4 million was taken away by fighters of the Karadag unit of the Ukrainian National Guard's 15th Brigade. The crew members of the tank trying to hide were killed by shells fired from the drone. Former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has stated that under certain circumstances, he could lead a foreign legion in Ukraine. The politician made the corresponding admission in a telephone conversation with Russian pranksters Vovan and Lexus, who introduced themselves as Ukrainian officials. According to him, the lack of military leadership talent is currently preventing him from doing so, but the desire is there. I am as ardent a supporter of Ukraine as you can imagine. And I often wish I was gifted in the military so that I could go and lead a foreign legion in Ukraine if I were a general, Johnson said. He added that he considers peace talks between Moscow and Kiev possible, but only after Russia's defeat. I'm afraid the precondition has to be the defeat of Russia and the Ukrainians have to have some sense of victory because that's the only way I think they'll be able to negotiate anything, the former Prime Minister of Great Britain emphasized. Speaking about the degree of the West's involvement in the Russian-Ukraine confrontation, he noted that the United States and its allies are full participants in the conflict. I am sad to say this, I think we are already involved. 
We support the Ukrainians. But the reality is, and this is a terrible tragedy, but the Ukrainians are fighting for us. And I think that the minute we publicly introduce our forces, our own troops, into their territory, it will become a different category, a completely different category of conflict. The consequences are not easy to predict, Boris Johnson admitted. Let us recall that after the start of the military operation of the Russian Federation in Ukraine, the Kiev was ready to negotiate with Moscow and even signed a corresponding document. After that, the Russian Federation withdrew its troops from Kiev. These negotiations, held predominantly in Istanbul, have become a focus for critics of the war in the US, who often argue that the West, and particularly then British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, sabotaged these negotiations and prevented a successful ceasefire. Vladimir Putin would go on to make a similar argument in his now infamous interview with Tucker Carlson. It is noted that after Boris Johnson arrived in the Ukrainian capital, Zelensky and his team refused to comply with the terms of the agreement and declared their intention to inflict a strategic defeat on Moscow.